Yeah, it's recording. Okay, so good afternoon, Milo, Ben. So Ben and Milo have been nice enough to be with us today. And um, uh, Ben is an artist and Milo is also an artist. So uh, Ben, can you tell us how you do it? Because it's hard to be on the spot right th like that with stranger and just ad lib kind of thing. You, you compose uh, just on the spot, right? Sure. So I have a, a project that I call Strangers Poems Project. Yeah. Um, I travel around the country and I write poems for people that I meet on the street or in a park or in some kind of scenic place. Um, I ask people to give me three to five words. Any words except for names of people or places. Oh, okay. Them. To keep it... Uh... Something that I can understand. Okay. Um, so then I look at those words, uh, I ask some follow-up questions, and I, I look for relationships between the words. I let my imagination um, take, uh, take the words and try to put them in different configurations together, look you for try relationships. You catch the spirit of the, I mean, what the, the person wants to convey. Yeah. And sometimes people know what they want to convey. Sometimes uh, it's it's more like random words that they give. Um, oh. So uh, and then I I listen for the music of the language and I follow. Once I get my first line, I just follow that logic and that that train of thought until uh, the paper finishes. Okay. So, do you get most requests for special occasions? I would say it is a mixture, maybe like a, maybe a 50-50 mixture. Okay. Uh, often it will be, for, for occasions, it will be like uh, for someone's birthday or for an anniversary or even a, a death um, or a wedding. Yeah, like or a something. memorial. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Other times it's just like a keepsake for a trip for somebody or, uh, or someone's out on the town with a friend and wants a, an art experience. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to Milo. Milo is uh, your stranger in the street. You Hello. never met him Hello. before. You never. So he's a stranger. We're going to keep mm -hmm. him anonymous. So ask Milo how he would like his poem to be done. Okay, so uh, you can either think of um, a poem for some... Or you can tell me that you want it for, for yourself or for someone else. That would be the first step. And then uh, you think of three to five words for me. Any words, but uh, keep them kind of uh, not from the same set. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I'd like it to be more for myself, uh -huh. I think. Um, I don't have anybody in mind that I'd want to give it to um, at the moment. Uh, and I guess, so three to five words. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go first one, I'll go park. Um, I'll go origami. Um, do boots. And bicycle. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, he has beautiful purple boots. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know and how to show what is, what is, uh, Yeah, you can show them. Uh, what is origami? <laughs> Origami, like the uh, Japanese paper folding arts, ah. like the paper cranes and oh, okay. others. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the question I always ask after this is, what's on your mind as you give these words? Um, I was just thinking of things that either I like about myself or um, things that I enjoy. Like I really enjoy biking. I enjoy doing origami. I enjoy mm. going to parks. I enjoy wearing. I don't know things I enjoy. All right. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, or the origami that you make and a couple of words from origami? Gosh, um, <laughs> I um, I have done a lot of origami since I was in high school. I used to do it like during classes. Um, a couple of words from origami. What do you What do you mean by that? Like um, terms or or even just like uh, origami forms that you make. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think like the most classic thing that I think a lot of people do is they make like an origami crane. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very, I, I've, I designed a few models myself, um, and one of my favorites is I made this fox design that I really like. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess an origami fox would be another term. Um, I guess origami animals are generally what I what I enjoy making the most. Um, yeah. Cool. And tell me about the paper that you use. Do you care about the paper choice? Is that that's a that's a good question. I um I like to. I, I have like a bunch of fancy paper that I keep at my um, dorm room, mm -hmm. but I also um, I also just like to make stuff out of like I'll, I'll tear a square out of a receipt or I'll take a piece of other paper I'll recycle it into something cool. Cool. And I think that's fun because it's not it's like not wasteful. It's you know. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So now you have to get into a strength of, insp of uh, inspiration, how about you going to do it? Yes. So he's going to take a minute to get inspired mm -hmm. by what you gave him, and then he's going to start typing what he thinks it's about. So usually Ben is surrounded by people at the fair building, <laughs> yeah. and uh, he has to do it right there on the spot. I can imagine that being stressful. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. He has to deliver. Yeah. Yeah, in any given uh, day, I'll, I'll try to get like 20 poems written. Really? <laughs> yeah, wow. so. Um, that's maybe like a. 20 a day? Yeah. Oh like my god, a you gotta six switch. Six hour a day, switch, maybe. Switch. Yeah. Switch between minds. Do you do that like almost every day? Like, is that a hundred poems a week? Or <laughs> um, I do. I I write definitely like uh, at least three, four days a week. Um, mm -hmm. Like usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, oh, sometimes wow. other days. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to make a living. Yeah. Meeting people that's and writing cool. poems. You met a lot of great people this way. All right. A moment of silence so he can get inspired. add one modification if you ask him. Oh, true. Mm -hmm. How many is your poems usually? How many lines? Like 10 lines? Um, I, I've never actually counted. I don't know. <laughs> Mine was around that. Yeah. Do people sometimes tell you things that are very personal? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels often therapeutic. Oh, really? People. Yeah, it can yeah. get very deep very quickly. Yeah, I can imagine that. I mean, here, someone you never saw before, and they say, I'll never see him again anyway, so I'm going to tell him the truth. And it's okay if he knows the truth about me because I won't see him again. The, the typewriter is to add that, uh, because it's not a computer, right? So it gets people attention. Yeah, it serves that purpose. It definitely draws people in. It also, um, if you think about it, uh, well, here's my handwriting. It's, uh, not, it's yeah. not the best. So um, it's the most logical tool for the job. I can't yeah. carry around a printer yeah. and, and a poetry, charger. And poetry is like the old days, you know, like a computer would look like mm, too much Google, but if yeah. you do it personalized, it has to be a mechanical one. Exactly. So each one takes me about 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back in the trance here. Hopefully we can edit all the dead space out here. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. Uh, you can talk as you do it, like you mm -hmm. say. 
now I'm going to write about the second word that he gave me, or you can say, I'm going to try to capture what he wants to say. Okay. So, so far, um, I'm thinking about these origami animals oh. interacting. Okay. Um, and now I'm thinking about boots and a park and bicycle and trying to feel what comes next. Okay. So did you say that your major was literature, poetry? Yeah, I went to school first for um, audio engineering, and then oh. I... Uh, you worked in the studio like this? Yeah, and then after uh, after like a semester or two, I, I found myself like deeply invested in poetry, and oh, okay. I kind of transitioned my focus to that. Yeah, you found out you have a little gift there. They said to find out your gift, you have to do things, and all of a sudden they say, oh, look at this, I can do it. <laughs> it's just like me, I noticed that when I do music video, I had like a gift to find the right music that fit the word of the painting. Mm. And it's only by doing that I discovered that. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this practice keeps giving me more ideas, and mm. it's, it's never dry. Exactly. It's Everybody's different. Eric. Everybody's unique. I like your shirt, by the way. How did you come okay. up? Did you go to Hawaii? <laughs> uh, no, I bought this in Italy, actually. Oh, very, very nice. A little the thrift shop rack outside. Yeah, yeah. Mm. The color are uh, very good. You don't find this in America. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm from the Midwest originally, from Indiana. Oh, okay, so you moved to California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I move, uh, I change cities every, like, maybe four to six months. Oh, so you get new blood? <laughs> yeah, I just enjoy it. Yeah, if you can handle the move, so you never take long-term housing. Yeah, not, not for a long while, yeah. Mouth to mouth kind of thing. Yep. And do people pay different prices depending yeah. on the length? Um, depending on the length, some more so for like longer term um, uh, commissions. Like oh. for holidays, I'll open thirty slots and okay. uh, have different paper size options and um, offer edits. Um, for street poems, it's usually this uh, this size. Oh, so and like you meet them for 10 minutes on the street. Exactly, yeah. And for holiday, they can put the order in advance. Yeah. And then, yeah, for, for the holiday orders, um, usually it's a gift for someone, so uh, that, that can be more challenging because I need to convey what they want to convey to another person. So within that, there's a whole world of, of their relationship that I oh, need to try to understand. Need to find out. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be husband and wife, and it could be girlfriend, boyfriend, or it could be just two people uh, that are just friends. <laughs> or depends. parents. Or parents. Or, yeah, yeah parents, parents is uh, also a good part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask those questions. You get into their private life a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they let me. Some some people don't let me. Some people Do are eager to. They open yes. up. 
Yeah, I've seen you converse with people. They were very comfortable talking to you. <laughs> yeah, before this, I was a teacher um, and uh, I've and also a musician and performer. So I feel yeah. like all of all of these parts of myself are are very well uh, for, suited for this. this, for this yeah, it all mm -hmm. came together for you to do this. Right. So after a few months in SF, you might go to San Jose or somewhere else. You do the Bay Area first, like Oakland and Emeryville. Berkeley, you should find a lot of students there. Yeah, I've set up in Berkeley a couple of times. I was there right before um, the first day of classes. Oh. And I had a line, a very long line. People were waiting an hour and a half to get a poem, and it was... It was oh, magical. There's just this energy there. They love creative stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter went to Berkeley. So yeah, it's a, it's a very vibrant community of 32,000 students, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, All it's right. a, different, a different feel when you go to Berkeley. So I'm almost done. Um, I'm going to kind of laser focus for the last portion just to make sure it okay, all flows. Okay, we'll let you focus then. You type really good, I'm going to hire you as a typer. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably very fast now, huh? Yeah, I could probably get a job in a typing pool in the 1960s in an yeah. ad agency. Yeah. <laughs> they used to do all the work like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they could survive typing one day, that was a day. Oh, there used to be like several typists in the room, and all uh -huh. of them typing in those mechanical ones. Sounds like a racket. It, it was like an orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here, so new, so we can handle it. That's why they invented computers, so we wouldn't be that noisy in the office. They were all IBM typewriters. And they, they made a killing some type of stuff. And then it all went up to eight with the computers. I don't know what they did with the millions and millions of typewriters. <laughs> so here you are now editing. Oh, you signed Just it. Sign it. It's yep. already so done. Here is the poem. And oh, so beautiful. A couple so little typos, but I'll, I'll read it for, for my life. Okay, so the words again were park, origami, boots, bicycle. Paper jaws, the crane craning its neck, caught in the fox's mouth, the hot pink boots of time marching away through darkened parks, through months that shift and shed their clothes like husks shucked from a pale white ear of Horn. The wind sings through bike spokes and then subsides. Thank you. You're welcome. That's, That's so, so awesome. Cool. I like it. Thank you. It was very poetic, more than yeah. mine. <laughs> 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 yeah, so sometimes you, you, do, you do the real good. Okay, so this is his gift to you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. This is wonderful. 
and it's free of charge. <laughs> but uh, thank you for doing that for the show. Absolutely, thank Let you. Let me for read it me. now. So I mean, let's say if I read it differently, Pepper Jaws, the crane craning its neck, caught in the fox's mouth, the hot pink boots of time marching away through darkened parks, through months that shift and shed their clothes like husk shucked from a pale white ear of corn, the wind sings to pike spokes and then subside. Yeah, it is poetic. You want to read it, see if it sounds different with you? Sure. Um, paper jaws, the crane craning its neck, caught in the fox's mouth, the hot pink boots of time marching away through darkened parks, through months that shift and shed their clothes, like husks shucked from a pale white ear of corn. The wind sings through bike spokes and then subsides. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you like it? Yeah, this is wonderful. Yeah. Nice so thank you. So you, did, you. You outperform yourself today. It's very poetic. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I would love a, an origami animal. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if that ever... Well, maybe I have like a receipt or something. Oh yeah. Oh, I have the paper right here too. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can oh, give man. me contact info. We could even, uh, yeah, you could write, you could fold origami out of a poem. That'd be wonderful. That would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, right. you can post it on your social media or you can give him contact info. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you two can stay in touch, whatever. You get a referral online too. Mm -hmm. So Ben, uh, it's been such a pleasure to have you um, on the show and um, I hope you'll stay a little bit longer in San Francisco <laughs> and not leave us so soon uh, because I will be uh, taking away some charm at the ferry building, right? Thank you very much. Yeah, Thanks and uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll move up, uh, but to keep it this way, you know, like organic, you're not going to surround yourself with 10 computers later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just keep it organic so you attract the right people who wants one on one rather than just a digitally produced poem. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's ways to write poems online or whatever, mm -hmm. but when you do it right there on the spot, people are impressed because it's it's real. It's, it doesn't come from Google. It doesn't come from an inspiration from another poet. Mm -hmm. It's just you and your stranger. Yeah, and there's a, there's a real one -on -one. Um, human connection that it, I think is so important right now. Yeah, I did feel the connection with you because I didn't even, th when you asked me, I didn't even think that I was going to uh, say something like what I said. And mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, that told him something very personal. Yeah. <laughs> After you, you speak, you, you realize that you open up to the po poet writer. Uh -huh. So, uh, again, thank you for being here, and I will let you know the date it will air. Okay. And um, Milo and you can exchange contact info. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you. All right. Um, so, I guess I will pack up, and then are, are you, uh, do you want to sit in this chair? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can go ahead and sit here. Thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I've actually thought before that it would be cool to do like yeah. origami paper folding on the poems. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On your way out, you can tell Javon that I'm ready to get set up with the new guest. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll, 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 follow, I'll follow you on Instagram and you can see, I have like a, I, po I post, um, I like leave origami in random places around cities and oh, stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I love that. So, yeah. Cool. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Mario. <laughs> see yeah. you in the future. Thank you, Ellie. The table's outside. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's great. Thank you. So while I wait for Javon, I have to make a quick call. I don't know if stop this.
This is really new to me, but he'll, he's going to be here soon to show me this new switcher. Oh, hi. So, um, I'm here with uh, Milo, um, who I met by, by coincidence, right? Yeah. Just like a stranger in the street, like on the bus at the bus stop. <laughs> yeah, and um, and then I thought that's good uh, because you do pretty much what we do here, you know. Mm -hmm. You do that in another school, though, right? Yeah. W which school? Um, I go to CCA, uh, California College of the Arts. Okay, College of the Arts. That's not the one on Market. That's the Institute of the Arts. Yeah, no, it's um, it's on Hooper Street. Oh, in San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is it open to the public or it's a private school? Um, it's a it's a private school, um, I believe. Um, and um, yeah, it's a private school. Two year program kind of thing or more? Um, I think animation is like a, it's it's one of the bigger programs at the school. I think the, the school is pretty big architecture school and um, they have like a good design program. Um, um, that's what you want to do later, the architectural design. No, I just know that that's something that the school is good at. Um, they have a lot of, like, a lot of classes and a lot of space that's dedicated to that in the buildings. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything is creative. Uh, your shirt that's flowers. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you're like a hippie, and you have uh, hippie boots. No? I am from Oregon, so. <laughs> oh, people like to wear like to wear these things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so you're from Oregon and. A lot of greens there, except after the fires, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of fires recently. It's been. It's been honestly getting a little bit less green in Oregon. It's sort of um, getting drier during the the summers. I think mm. it rained like only like two or three times this summer. Oh, that's very bad. Yeah. We had a little bit more rain than that, but not too much this yeah. year. No. We had a lot of dry weather this year. So uh, you from Oregon? You decided to come to California. Uh, because you have family here? Um, well, kind of. I, I do have family in the Bay Area, um, but I just, I really like the school. I found it um, online while I was looking at colleges. I really wanted to go to art school, and so I was looking around, and this school really spoke to me, so. Yeah, um, so that was right after high school? Yeah, or no, I actually, um, I went to Montana State. Um, oh, you already went to school? Yeah, so I went to, I went to one year of school in Montana for engineering mechanical engineering and then I realized that mechanical engineering wasn't something that I wanted to pursue. Yeah. So I dropped out and then I spent a gap year making a like portfolio and also taking a few online classes from my community college. And then I applied to CCA and only CCA and then I got in luckily. Really? And then now I'm here. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so now you're into uh, two to four years depending on how far you want to go. Yeah, so it, I I can graduate in three years if I take like a like a few extra classes um, every semester every every like two of the eight semesters I've left, but um, it, realistically it's probably going to be like three and a half years before I graduate mm. with a degree in animation. Great, and um, uh, how do you start? They start you with learning how to use the computer, just like here. Well, kind of. Um, they they start us off with they, they give us the option to work traditionally, which means that you're using like a bit, one of those big light boards um, and a bunch and like a big stack of animation papers mm -hmm. to make um, your different animations. And then you can, um, but you can also use like a program that you're comfortable with on your tablet or computer or whatever that is. Um, and I think they get more in depth on the specific programs later in the thing later in the um, program. But to start us off, they're just going over like the fundamentals of animation, and they're not going, getting bogged down in details of different programs, okay. and stuff like that. So, so now you're in your first semester. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like a, a baby in the new, <laughs> the new pool yeah. of uh, new things, and the, you like uh, the college, the friends, the barrier. Yeah. Although it's COVID, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is really cool, even with even with COVID. I've I've actually heard that. Um, the CCA was thinking about um, opening up all classes to be in person, so I wouldn't have any more online classes, which would be really nice. Oh, yeah, you can meet friends. And yeah, you meet more people, and you can... 
actually be in like a studio environment, which is really nice. It's sort of cool. weird doing 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 art homework from home. Yeah. Do they have studios like this, or it's more like a drawing studios? There's sort of like a mix. Um, I know that there is there's like a computer lab um, that we can have access to, like here, with yeah. drawing tablets and stuff like that, and like editing editing software and all that. Um, and then there's also like a drawing studio where you can where you have the light tables and you. Did you draw this? No. I did not. I actually got this shirt from Target. <laughs> okay, okay. So some, another designer did it. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're attracted to do something nature, like nature or architectural? I I really like nature. Um, it's always been very inspiring to me. Like flowers and um, you want to, uh, plants and stuff are very pretty. Yeah, like your poem. <laughs> yeah, like my poem. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's a huge demand for that. Yeah. So if you skilled and good, uh, you you have a job. <laughs> yeah. Because there's always needs for design. I see uh, even big uh, tech company hire for design. Yeah. They la they have a huge like at Google a huge uh, creative department. Yeah, because everything is sort of needs to be designed in some way, or everything needs to have someone design it, make it look pretty. So. In the first stages, they show you how to use the equipment. Yeah, a little bit. And then next month, you might start to create stuff? Yeah, so we've been sort of creating stuff already a little bit. Um, but I think the next semester, they um, will like really get started. I think I have like a project class where I have to make like a big project over the course of the whole semester. Mm -hmm. um, so far, it's just been like little like weekly assignments, like you have to animate something for something small and you have a week to do it and then you move on to another project for a week and I think next semester they'll start doing um, like a longer term project than that. Mm. So um, the, the teacher would assign a project to a group of five people, like a little team? Um, no, it's all, been, it's all been like solo projects so far. Okay. Um, okay. I was hoping that there would be more <laughs> group projects. I really enjoy group projects. Um, because of the interaction. Yeah, because of the interaction. You sort it of must, get like It must be harder for a student your age, full of energy, to be isolated uh, from his friends at home during COVID. Yeah, it was really tough. Um, I tried to get outside as much as I could, though, and yeah. like, hang out people outside where it's safer. Yeah, where the Dolores Park or Alamo Square, you go to those parks? Yeah, um, I've been to Dolores Park a few times. Um, yeah. There's I, a I lot like of creative people, they do uh, yoga, headstand, uh, also, how do you call it, juggling. And you, you meet all kinds of people there. Yeah. Uh, so, it's just to strike a conversation with them and not to be shy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so... Yeah, but uh, when you'll be finally in class, then, you know, people will break their defenses and be friends uh, like normal people, like a family, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's the dream. So, <laughs> so do you meet your instructor, instructors online or you already met them in person? Um, I've only met one of my instructors in person. Um, the it's, other ones. Not, it's not pre-packaged course, they, it's live course. Yeah, they, 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 they will have like Zoom meetings um, where they all ask questions to the class and then someone will answer, they'll put okay. us in groups in on, on, online and we'll have to figure something out online in that group. Okay, and the group is allowed to work together? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, if they have a question, they can ask the person next. The, yeah. to them on the Zoom, Yeah. <laughs> if they can connect with them in some way. Yeah. And then and then the teachers would say, yes, that's correct, or no, that's not correct, or he will guide you in the right direction. Yeah, he was, yeah. So, that's let's right. say your first project will be to design a bag like this. Mm -hmm. Let's show the bag. <laughs> well, this, is the, this is actually the CCA bag. <laughs> oh, it's a CCA. So, yeah. so he, the, the teacher will say, design a logo for CCA. A, uh -huh. and everybody will come up with the logo. Yeah. And then uh, try to put it online, and then you'll pick the logo you want, or you can put it on the bag. You can do that. You're free to do that. Yeah, definitely. Oh. 
Um, they have a lot of like cool software that you can use um, that's freely available through the university. For logos? Yeah, for logos or for whatever. I mean, logos right now on Fiverr is the most common uh, things that people buy. Like logo makers, really? you know, logo makers. Yeah. There's a dime a dozen. And people pick the, the artist they want and order the logo from them. And then when they get, when the artists get uh, uh, attention that he's good, yeah. then he gets um, first level, second level, the Fiverr gives them like a ranking yeah. once they complete a few projects. That's cool. I've never, I've never checked that out before. Oh okay. yeah, and also there's Upwork and there's, you know, freelance uh, website. Yeah. Freelancer, I think it's called. But mm. There's many websites where you can offer your services and if someone hires you, it's not, you decide what you want to charge. Uh, yeah. With Fiverr, you can start as low as $5. <laughs> True, <laughs> I guess that makes sense with the but Fiverr some, name. <laughs> but some people do start 25 or, but then the tip is usually higher than the start amount. Yeah. If you do a good job. <laughs> True. True. I don't know if you hired people on Fiverr. Uh, no, I've never used Fiverr. Oh, you never used no. it? No. Okay. It's just, uh, uh, it was started by a French guy and then um, it grew like a uh, mushroom because five dollars people say, oh, even if he doesn't do a good job, you know, the worst that could happen to me is lose five dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a shot. <laughs> it's worth a shot. So some people will hire from five different artists. Uh -huh. a logo and then pick the one they like. True. Yeah, and they can trash the other four. <laughs> so, so basically it's a good way to, to get different views of, uh, for your logo. Yeah. And, and later on when you know exactly what you're going to be doing, um, then you can do maybe textile printing or t-shirt printing or, yeah. or other design. But what did you have in mind to design? Um, well, I, I really, I have like this, I have like, um, I really just want to work on like TV, cartoons or TV shows. Um, oh, that's the level up. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's sort of my dream. Um, but yeah, honestly. We do have an animation thing here. Yeah. yeah you were telling so, me about that. So, so you, you're going to learn that now, next? Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on that right now. Um, yeah. Animation has always been sort of like, um, something that I've really enjoyed watching and I'd like to be able to participate sort of yeah in actually a, a few it. get famous but uh, you know you gotta really find the right contract to become famous but basically you start doing your own stuff and see if people like your stuff yeah the way that my my uncle talks about it actually is that like um, people in like those industries that make um, shows or make movies or make whatever they are really they really are really quick to sort of put you in a box a little bit. So if you say that you're like an animator and you animate for someone else, then that's all you'll be doing is just drawing what, um, they, want. what they want. And so really what you have to do is you have to market yourself as somebody who, um, who can has do both. good ideas and has like, um, has the has the tools to like create a show, like direct, be a director or be a storyboard artist or whatever is. Yeah, so if you get to the big production companies, they can pay quite cool, well. Yeah. And then a few of them make it to the screen, you know, yeah. for especially for kids on Netflix and all that. Yeah. Do you like to do animation for kids? Um, yeah, I, I like, um, yeah, I like cartoon shows for kids, like Cartoon Network shows and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. There's also a different kind of skill. Yeah, Adventure Time has always been like a really big inspiration for me. I don't know if you've seen that show. Adventure Time, okay. Yeah. And it's for what age group? It's like, um, I think it's like like ten to fourteen is sort of the oh the, teenage yeah, the the goal age. I don't know. <laughs> so you can kind of know what teenagers like. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're young enough to know because you just yeah, it's just a teenager. <laughs> you just were a teenager yeah. a few years ago. And my sister is um, like is she's twelve right now. So, so you can ask her. I can just ask her what she likes. Yeah. I know, it's funny how each generation ev evolve yeah. and they don't want what the old generation like. Right. They want their own stuff. So, yeah. And then they, just like the typewriter analogy, in in the old days everybody had the mechanical typewriter and then the new generation said, no, we're going to create something better, noiseless, faster, 
lighter, everything. So they created it. Yeah. So it's it's the same with animation. You gotta create something innovative. Something fresh. Fresh, attractive, yeah. and fun. Because I, even though at my age, I, if I see some a good cartoon, I like it. Like Snoopy is uh, timeless, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's a classic. Schultz and all that. Those those will never go away. I don't think they will. I mean, it attracts all age groups. Yeah. No, definitely. I think a lot of animations are just timeless. Like when you look back on those old Disney movies, they're still People super. People watch them. Yeah. yeah they're still like super enjoyable. Snow White uh, and the Seven Dwarf, and then you have Cinderella. Yeah. Uh, and then I mean, all the fairy tales have been mean, made into an animation movie, and yeah. they did real well. Pinocchio and yeah. Did you read those when you were young? I think I did read Pinocchio when I was young. I don't know if I've ever actually seen the animated movie, which maybe is silly since I'm an animation major. I should, yeah. I should get on that. Yeah, go on Netflix and find <laughs> it, or on YouTube. I'm sure yeah. you'll find Maybe not the whole production, but the a few clips. You know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely could get inspired from that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I figure if YouTube put the whole movie in there, uh, maybe people will have to do a, a pay-per-view, but... Um, Netflix is the platform where people pay to watch, you know. Yeah, definitely. And now there's a lot more than Netflix. Yeah, I think yeah, Disney even has its own streaming they service. They do. Yeah. I heard. I heard Disney is doing doing good, and they producing a lot more. Yeah. And so you want to work for a big company like that? I don't know if I want to work for a big company like that. I don't really. I don't love the way that um, that those big companies like treat their employees. But honestly. I think it'd be cool to work anywhere in the animation. Start. Yeah. Yeah, until until you decide this is my talent, this is where I'm going to concentrate doing it. Yeah. Um, but right now you don't know. It's too early in the game. Too early in the game, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because we discover our talent after a few years. It doesn't happen just the first day. It's by doing that you become. Yeah. The, the specific artist that you're meant to be and so by first finishing school then practicing your first whatever uh, animation then you say oh maybe I should go in that direction yeah definitely so you you have pretty much picked up a very creative uh, profession <laughs> yeah hopefully yeah, that, yeah, that's what you wanted anyway, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because architects are creative, Yeah. but you need a lot more engineering background. Like, you have to do maybe four years of school of uh, uh, mechanical and architectural design, and then move on to become, uh, to the next level, to become an architect. Yeah. So that's too hard, maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's, too, it's just like a different type of, of thing, because you're taking like, a bunch of tests and you're doing all that instead of proving yourself with your work as much as you are in animation. It's sort of... Oh, you have to prove that you understand structural engineering, yeah. uh, all, all these things that are very important. You don't want the whole building to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so they train you very good before they even give you the right to design a building. Yeah. <laughs> but as for animation, you can make a little mistake here and there and it won't make everything crumble. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit more creative. True. So, so it gives you a little bit more room to to expand beyond the, the the mathematical part of it, you know. Yeah, definitely. There, there is. I'm sure when you do animation, there is some guideline that you have to fall into. You cannot go off the screen, or you cannot go. You got to stay within the screen. Yeah. So there is some guideline right there. Yeah, and then and then you have to learn perspectives, like someone who's far away, someone who's close up. Yeah, we're actually working on that in one of my classes, or we're you going are? to be soon. Yeah, um, making like perspective backgrounds and making a character move around in a perspective and space. Inserts and stuff like that. Yeah. That should be fun. I'm really excited for it, yeah. Yeah, because when we were in the other studio, we had three cameras, and then we had to mix it all up. It also takes some skills to do that. You know, you have yeah. to have a floor director, and you know, it's visual. It's not hand uh, uh, drawing, but it's still 
requires some skill. Some directors know how to capture the right angle. Yeah. And how to move the camera from one angle to the other. With this automation, there's not much room for creativity, I have to admit. Uh, <laughs> you only get three different options. Yeah, there are only three options. As for in the old days, when the director was in the control room, he would get many different angles, like, sometimes. Yeah. As, as he moved from one camera to the other, he would do a different angle the next shot. True. So as they automate things, it takes the creativity out of it, I think. Yeah, a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. So I hope they don't do that to your profession. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope, but I hope they'll let you move things around as you wish rather than say, okay, now you have three templates, three cameras, and you have to move from one template to the other. I hope that will never happen. Yeah. yeah although, me too. although if you do a character animation, you'll have the main character um, that you design to to do movements, mm -hmm. and then the other character to do movements, and then you have, I guess, to combine them um, if they are still or moving or running. So that's also a huge. Uh, a huge uh, set of skills you have to learn. Yeah, or like we're like we made a we made a model sheet in one of my classes um, of like the different ways that you would look at a character and different ways that they would move around a space. Yeah, which is really cool. Um, it wasn't like as much animating the character as it was like imagining them in different spaces around a, a space or in different areas around a space. Oh, and that was very cool. So 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 you do use a regular MacBook Pro. Um, I have I have like a Surface laptop, so a Windows computer. Um, oh. But uh, they do have the software for animation. Yeah, yeah, they have, um, and the school has this has a lot of free software. Um, a lot of people use like Photoshop, or they use um, different programs. I use Blender to animate. Oh, right Blender. Now. Okay. Yeah. Because I did a class at Photoshop, and if you don't have a taste for it, you yeah, let, you let it go. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> because you gotta keep up with the class first of all, because they move pretty fast. Yeah. And second of all, if you don't have a taste for it, you, you're just gonna say no, that's not for me. Yeah. So yeah. Photoshop is kind of uh, it's good tool, but you gotta learn all of the features, and it's a long time to master all of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Photoshop is like a, definitely a deep dive. You gotta really commit to. <laughs> to if you like it, you yeah. gotta have a taste for it. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm sure you're using something a little bit simpler. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's called what? Um, Blender. And then the other um, program that the school provides that I've been working on a little bit is um, there's Adobe After Effects. and then there's Adobe is very good. Adobe is very good. Um, and then there's also one other one, um, Toon Boom Harmony. Actually, Photoshop is by Adobe. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, so, but they created many levels. Yeah. Many levels. Many different programs for different, that are better at different things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then there's like Final Cut Pro, they yeah. and so a different level up to, I'm sure they have, they also have editing software with Adobe. Yeah, they do. Yeah, Adobe Premiere, I think. Premiere, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so whether it's visual art or drawing art, they they have the right tools for it, Adobe. Yeah. Yeah. They, I think they're right here in San Francisco now, aren't they? Yeah, I think that they're across the street from my school, I'm, oh. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they have like an office right across the... Oh, you should go visit them. I know, I should go figure it out. <laughs> There's also, you should go visit also another one, which with the treaty is called, uh, it's at One Market Street. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it's a different kind of uh, company, and uh, they do a lot of 3D. Do you remember the name of that one? Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's going to come back to me. Yeah. Uh, they have a, a showroom on the third floor of one market, and they, um, and then they bought a whole bunch of companies, and, and now they, they do all kinds of uh, creative stuff. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, I don't know, because it's your first semester, uh, um, Maybe we cannot go deep down on what you will be doing in the future, but do you have an idea what your profession will be? Um, I really just like to work on cartoons, whatever that means. Oh, um, from now, okay. Yeah, 
So do they let you start from what you want to do from the beginning? Well, it's sort of like you just learn the fundamentals to work in like a, a lot of different spaces in the industry. Like you could be a, a lot of people are looking to be like storyboard um, artists or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't have like a specific area that I'm super invested in right now. But we'll see. But when you were in the previous school, did you like to do stories? Yeah, I. I <laughs> um, I took like a writing class, uh, like a creative writing class where I wrote oh, a like bunch of him, yeah. Yeah, um, and yeah. So, so you wrote Stories. a little, yeah, little segment of a story. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I did a, a lot in high school too with my writing classes. There were oh. a lot of like. So that's a good start. Stories. Yeah. Now you gotta come up with the right characters. Right. Come or characters. Come show it to your sister. Say, do you like this character? She <laughs> say, oh no, that sucks. So start yeah. do something different. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also, there might be characters that appeal more to boys than girls, or more to girls than boys. Yeah. But it, the secret is to do something that appeals not only to boys and girls, but to all segments yeah. of the age, of age, all age groups. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, always, I noticed that. Disney always have a pre-Christmas show they prepared for the for yes. Christmas. Sure. Every year they come up with a new animation for Christmas. Yeah. Did you ever go to Disney World? I've never been to Disney World, no, or Disneyland or anything like that. No? No. Oh, I have been. It's fun. True. My yes. family's not big on like amusement parks or anything like that. Oh, they'll reopen soon, I hope. Yeah. But they don't have as many amusements as in the past for the moment. Sure. They say in one year everything will, will reopen. Wow. By September 2022. Right helpful. now it's limited. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, kids will still be kids in 2022, I guess they, they'll have a chance to go. Yeah. Sure. And so you were raised in Oregon. Uh, so what attracted you to the creative side? Um, gosh, I don't know. I took a lot of um, like art classes in high school that I really oh, enjoyed. Oh, that too. That was always like part of one of my favorite things. Um, and Oregon is just like such a pretty state kind of, especially in Eugene where I lived. Um, mm -hmm. Just like a lot of places outdoors that you could get inspired by. Um, yeah, just a lot of cool things. So, so you did creative writing, uh, also uh, some, some art class and then you put them together a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mix and match them. <laughs> yeah, so that's what Ben was saying. He did this and that, and all of a sudden he found his yeah. vocation to be a poet. Uh, yeah. An instant poem, a strange, stranger poem. Stranger poems. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's amazing he can write a poem just like that on the spot, isn't it? I know, it's very impressive, yeah. This is a crazy, crazy cool we, poem. We didn't tell him in advance your words, we didn't uh, give him a time frame. He did right there in five minutes. Yeah, very impressive. The, yeah, and he does that for everybody that approach yeah. him, and he writes poem from them right there on the spot. It's definitely like a cool talent for sure. It is a cool. I like it. So it's he's a rare breed, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Uh, I don't see too many of those in San Francisco, but uh, we're gonna enjoy him while he's here, and then he's gonna move around. He said, but um, but uh, since you're so young. You don't know if you want to work solo, if you want to work with a big company or a medium company. Yeah. So this a lot of will, options. A lot of options later and on. So yeah. thank you so much. I enjoy uh, talking to you. It's been a fun interview. Yeah. And I hope I can follow you on Instagram. What's your Instagram? <laughs> um, it's I put origami places. Um, oh, okay. Here it um, is. Instagram. I put origami. That's places. that's another thing that I do that I didn't really touch on in this. Um, I like to. Um, sort of put origami in different places and I take pictures of it and I put it on Instagram. So I'll put it in like a funny place around a city oh. um, and leave it there. Right. It's a tree, right? I make a lot of different things, like a, like a fox or something and I'll leave it like in a tree or in like a branch or in a birdhouse or something like that. And then you post it on Instagram? And then I post it on Instagram, yeah. Okay, I'll check it out tonight. Yeah. Or this afternoon. <laughs> I mean, this, uh, Instagram has so many... Um, Kind of creative people, but uh, I will definitely uh, definitely take take a look at your uh, Instagram, and then uh, you have a Facebook page called I Put Origami Places. 
uh, also. I mean, it's on Facebook also. You know. It's just on Instagram, I think. Just on Instagram, yeah. where you push yeah. an image. Yeah. Or did you ever push uh, put uh, video clips? No. No, I no, not so much. Yeah. Um, not yet. Not yet. You not have yet. to do an animation first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll check it out, and maybe in a year or two, I'll see a video clip and then yeah. an animation that you did. Definitely. Yeah, it's going to evolve, I'm sure. Definitely, yeah. So it has been a lot of fun. I'm sure your career is going to be very interesting. And uh, if you become famous, I'll go watch your movies. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. You never know. Yeah? Never know. Thank you so much. So yeah, this thanks was, for having me. So this was Milo Davis. Oh, I like that. It's a very famous name. My, <laughs> it's like the musician Milo Davis. Yeah. Yeah, I love his music, jazz musician. Yeah, I don't listen to too much of his music, though. Yeah. Oh, okay, but he's the old timer, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he's a fame. just the last name is famous already. Yeah, right. And the first name is almost like his, so Nearly. You, he already gave you traction to the name. <laughs> Keep the name. People connect with Mal Davis. So have a fun rest of your day and I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.